right then well um let's let's be still as we come to uh, our time together let's pray together let the beauty of the lord our god be upon us establish the work of our hands lord establish the work of our hands we believe and trust in god the father almighty we believe and trust in jesus christ his son we believe and trust in the holy spirit we believe and trust in the three in one and we ask heavenly father that you would help us this evening to still our hearts as we sing along to some lovely hymns as we listen to your word and as we allow your word to uh, to dwell richly in our minds and in our hearts and in our lives be with us we ask in jesus name Amen. so we're going to uh, of course the season of easter will be the season of easter for a few weeks now so i uh, i wonder how well if we could have our first First hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today. So, so we're going to have our Bible reading for this evening, which is, uh, in fact, the same reading as we have uh, we had on Sunday, if uh, for last Easter Sunday. So, how uh, I wonder if you'd put it up, please. And uh, oh, here we go. Bab, I will. Uh, Read this, so Matthew 28, verses 1 to 20. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him 
that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So for a few, uh, a few moments, we're going to uh, think about those verses in Matthew's Gospel and um, what they may have for us, what they might mean to us this evening. And I guess um, I'm just intrigued by not just Matthew's account, I think it's, it's uh, all these accounts in, in the Gospels because there's a great similarity, of course, between them all, um, as you'd expect. So that in terms of the big stuff, the big story, um, they're all alike. They all, all four, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all say that Jesus had died, that he was buried, and that he was placed in a tomb. And they all said that there were witnesses. This didn't happen uh, secretly. There were people who saw this happen. So that's that much is clear. They all say that um, there were angels, some, some one angel or two angels, uh, Jesus appearing in uh, at the empty tomb. And in one way or another, they all have the women carrying a message to the men saying, uh, tell them to come or tell them, to, tell them to, that I'm alive. But there are also some differences between them all. And that's, what's, that's what intrigues me, really. Um, and if you've ever, if you, if you think of, it's not the right, right, right time of the year, but Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens starts with um, Marley being dead. And if you remember that, it was the opening first line. That Jacob Marley was dead and had been dead for seven years. Well, the Gospels all have this as the, as the death of Jesus and the burial of Jesus and the resurrections between them all. And yet there are some, some little differences. And this is, I want to look at Matthew tonight, just for a, a few moments. And I'm really intrigued by this because uh, why, why are they slightly different? So Mark's Gospel, for example, um, there, are, there are two endings to Mark's Gospel. So uh, there's the, the older ending, which basically ends with the women going to the empty tomb um, and then they flee in astonishment and alarm. They're terrified. There's a, there's a, a newer ending which has been added on to all our versions, but it, the, the older one ends with that. And that's, it seems to be believable, that one. I think I'd be terrified. These women just go and then they flee. You get to Luke and Luke's gospel is, is a bit longer. That's where we get the road to Emmaus story. Uh, and we, we get the lovely story of Jesus appearing to his disciples at, on the Sunday evening. 
and then the ascension that's in Luke John is different again John has got the story of Mary Magdalene encountering Jesus the story of doubting Thomas as we call him and then that final chapter where Jesus has breakfast with his disciples and and he there's a lot of things that are restored these relationships but Matthew is different again and uh, and I noticed this on Sunday so as, as Naomi was preaching if you haven't listened to Naomi so it's really well worth listening to or revisiting it but should be read from this passage and um I just there were some things I noticed for the first time as as we were reading the passage and then listening to Naomi speaking and the thing is this with with Matthew is that he the, the women kind of get the centerpiece of the story it's not the it's not the men and in fact the disciples aren't really involved we're not directly in Jerusalem the women are given this message he is not here he is risen then uh, go and tell you know tell the disciples to meet me in Galilee but the, 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 the first seven or eight verses are all about the women and how Jesus meets with them, how they're given this message. And that, that's just got me thinking, really. Why did Matthew do that? Why? Because in all the other Gospels, not all of them, but in, in Luke and in John, the disciples, the male disciples, are take center stage much more. They don't, they don't even really appear in this part of the story. So as though Matthew's trying to say something, it seems to me. He's trying to say something about the impact of this message, the impact of the resurrection on the way society is going to work from now on, on the way this this kingdom is going to be topsy turvy. I was thinking there was a, a a prayer that every Jewish male would have prayed at the time of Jesus, and it's still there today. It's a very old prayer, this found in the Talmud, and it's three three blessings, and they're not, you know. <laughs> If they're not they're not so great if you're a woman it has to be said these three blessings because basically the blessings are we bless god that i'm a man uh i'm not a woman and i'm not a slave that's how these blessings go and here's matthew changing just changing that completely and this this most important message of all is given to a group who at that time had no legal status had had no kind of credibility as witness a woman could go to a court of law and and take oath and give evidence it just wasn't permissible and here's matthew putting women right at the heart of everything of the greatest story ever told and that's just that's really made me think uh i'm gonna i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna wisdom on this but it just shows me that the impact it speaks to me of the impact of the gospel the impact on hierarchies and the way society normally works all the priorities the resurrection smashes all of that up and says now that Jesus is knowable. God is known and available to everybody. It doesn't matter who we are, what, how we were born, what our gender is. It's irrelevant because he comes to us all and loves us all. That's quite a, an amazing thing. And the thing with Matthew um, is that the, the last chapter of Matthew has these women telling the story. But the first chapter of Matthew um, is the genealogy is as dry as dust isn't it it goes genealogies but except in matthew's genealogy there are five women and he goes out of his way to to name them uh there's and they're all quite unusual people there's tamar there's rahab the prostitute there's ruth who's a gentile there's bathsheba uh, with whom david had an affair and gave birth to solomon eventually and then there's of course there's mary the mother of jesus and matthew is trying to say something that that God is giving a voice to people who had no voice. Um, and so I just want us to think about that tonight. Um, and maybe particularly, and here's where it's going to land for us, I think is, because we, we all of us know this story really well. I mean, uh, we, we read it at least at Easter and throughout the year. We, this, is the, this is the heart of our faith. I mean, the resurrection is bedrock. It's ground zero in terms of, Christian a Christian confession and Christian faith and I guess we get very used to it even though it's the most extraordinary kind of story and uh, I guess the question I have for us tonight is on, on what I ask of myself and I ask it of you is the resurrection still changing me am I still seeing things afresh is it is is the resurrection of Jesus changing the way I look at the world and other people the church the future 
Um, how is it changing me? Because there's something so fresh. And uh, I feel I can so easily lose that. It becomes very stale and, and uh, almost obvious. And yet, uh, like those first women on that Easter day, they saw something for the first time. They saw him for the first time and they were changed. And this, this message, this Easter message, has within it the power just to keep on renewing the church and renewing us and opening our eyes to him in fresh ways all the time. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Lord, you've always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now, tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, Today, I believe. Lord, you've always spoken when time was ripe. And though you be silent now, today, I believe. And we pray for our world and the needs of our world. And particularly tonight, we think of those who are in great need because of imprisonment, because of torture, because of persecution, wrongful imprisonment. We think of Christian brothers and sisters across the world uh, who haven't seen their families in a long time. We think of Christian pastors, ministers, priests. We think of them in often far-flung countries to our own. But we remember them tonight and for their faithful witness to Jesus Christ. We think of the suffering of the Uyghur people in China, a voiceless people, a people whom apparently the Chinese government wants to, uh, as it were, to, uh, keep their voices from being heard, turn the volume down on them. Lord, we remember them, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that there would be justice for them and they would be given a voice and they would be heard. For the ongoing situation in Myanmar, for the situation in Hong Kong where there's real fear of the freedom to protest and the freedom of speech just being taken away. Well, we ask, Lord, that just as in the Easter story, in the story of the resurrection, voiceless people are given a voice. We pray for all those across the world and those whom we know, maybe even ourselves, Lord. We feel that we don't have the voice. No one's listening. We have something to say and yet unable to get it out. Lord, we pray that you would continue to give a voice to those who are voiceless and power to the disempowered and we ask all these things in and through the name of our lord and savior jesus christ who taught us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our second hymn, uh, 
I nearly said our second hymn is a modern hymn. It's not particularly modern, really. It came out in the 1980s, but uh, more modern than the first one we had. It's led like a lamb to the slaughter. It's written by Graham Kendrick. So how well, if we could have that, please. So, so let's close the blessing. Let's pray. Be the peace of the Spirit, mine.
this night. Be the peace of the Son, mine, this night. Be the peace of the Father, mine, this night. The peace of all peace, be mine, this night. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.